is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship, everyone, here at our Savior Lutheran Church. Great joy to be uh, together. Uh, welcome, everybody who's worshiping with us at home. Very glad that you're able to tune in and be comfortable and, and safe and, and have that option for one big family, whether we're here in the sanctuary or at home, praising our great God who comes to us with his gifts. And today we have the joy of seeing that gift in action again in the life of little Isla and Lynn. So I welcome the Lynn family, the Hartman family, to a, a, a very precious moment as we welcome little Isla into the family of faith through holy baptism. Welcome, glad you're, glad you're here. Everyone's kind of chomping at the bit, you probably, some of you have heard, maybe you're on Facebook or whatnot, but uh, you can tell I'm flying solo here this morning, and that's because Pastor Caleb is being a dad. Hi, Pastor Caleb. Glad you're tuning in as well. Encourage Pastor to kind of be dad and be father uh, here this weekend as on Friday afternoon, they welcome their second child into their family, little Henry Peter. Henry Peter.
Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The order of holy baptism, there are places for you as a congregation uh, to participate. So you can follow along on the screen with us as we move through these words. Our loving Father who comes today to give his gift of grace and new life to all his children, through water and the Spirit together, God adopts us into his family. And so today, Ila becomes our little sister in Christ through baptism and an heir with us into the kingdom of heaven. Hear what God's word has to say about life, sin, and our need for baptism. Then, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Surely, I would sin Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Baptism with God's love. Saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized in Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Sisters in holy baptism, God washes away the guilt of your sin and mine. Be assured that as you repent, you live in the gift of His forgiveness and His love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love to see the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ crucified and risen. Heaven and Heather, you have the responsibility of bringing Ida forward to be baptized, asking that this precious gift given to you receives the mercy and the promises of God. That is, be born again, washed clean of the guilt of sin she inherited from you, saved and welcomed into the kingdom of God by the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Do you promise to help your daughter grow in a relationship with Jesus through your devotion, teaching, example, and prayer? Yes, with the help of God. Carrie and John, it is your task as godparents to pray regularly for Ida, to remind her of her baptism day, to encourage Kevin and Heather as they nurture her spiritually, and to be a model of Christ-like care and kindness so that Ila may continue to grow in her faith and life. This would be especially important should her parents be called home to heaven. Do you promise to support and help Ila, Kevin, and Heather grow in these ways? Yes, with the help of God. When a child is born again of water and the Spirit and holy baptism, the challenging task of nurturing, molding, guiding, and admonishing begins. Will you, as members of our Savior, do everything within your power to support the Lynn family by providing a community of Christian nurture and care, a ministry where they can continue to grow in their faith, and by praying for Isla as she learns how to walk and run in faith, we say, 
attention first turning to the New Testament epistle of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope and glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? And not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of our Lord. I'd invite you to stand in respect and reverence for the words of the life and ministry of Jesus, recorded again in this section of the Sermon on the Mount that we focus on today. Verses 13 to 16 of Matthew 5. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. May we see it. Thank you. 
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength, our living, loving Redeemer. Amen. So, preparing for today, I found myself drawn back to probably uh, one of the heaviest questions that you could be asked as a kid. What do you want to be when you grow up? Remember anyone asking me that or asking yourself that? I mean, it's an exciting question, isn't it? It's a daunting question, especially as you start getting older, right? I actually wanted to be a pastor pretty early on, but that idea just kind of came and went because naturally I was intrigued by a lot of other things as a kid, like being a fireman, so cool, or a pilot, or an astronaut. You see, NASA's Apollo 11 mission in 1969 was fairly recent history, and everybody wanted to be an astronaut. Now, Lego did a survey very, very recently of kids around the country, the Lego company, and it was in honor of the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong taking those first steps for mankind on the moon. And this survey asked the kids of today, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the Lego survey, in this survey, only 11% of kids want to be an astronaut. It was the fourth leading answer. The rest of the list was teacher, coming in at number three. Pro athlete, coming in at number two. Oh, look at his promotion. <laughs> And at number one, with three times the number of votes as an uh, astronaut, was a YouTuber. <laughs> number one. I mean, astronauts are cool, but not as cool as YouTubers for kids or video bloggers. In other words, an influencer. An influencer. Hold on to that. Now, what's kind of cool about this, I think, is the idea that as a YouTuber or as a blogger, you can make a difference right now, and you don't even have to wait to grow up. You can kickstart your YouTuber or your influencer career with just an idea and a smartphone, and not just make a little difference. Look at these numbers from different platforms out there. On TikTok, Charlie DeMillo had 87.7 million followers. She's a radio personality dancer. On YouTube, the Swedish comedian, PewDiePie, 106.7 million followers. Instagram, Cristiano Ronaldo, soccer player, 238. Followers. And I put this last one up there just to kind of create a little perspective. Time Magazine, 3 million subscribers. So here's the point. Pastor Caleb, that was my introduction, actually. And after setting the stage, now this next point is my hook. <laughs> here's the point. You and I, in our small actions, in our small worlds, can make a huge difference right now just by using what you have at your disposal. And interestingly enough, Jesus affirms this very point of being an influencer in his Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. In other words, if you follow Jesus, you will be a person of influence. Not that you have the potential to be, or if you try hard enough, or if you have enough tools in your toolbox, 
Or if you save enough money, you might be just, you are. You are. Like it or not. The Sermon on the Mount, starting with Jesus' disciples, ended up becoming for him a huge platform to just lay it all out there for us. And his first step, as Pastor Caleb talked about last week in the introduction, was to let us know how God describes us, how blessed the spiritually poor are, how blessed the merciful are, the meek, those who mourn, those who are persecuted, how blessed they are for his name's sake. Jesus' next step, then, in his Sermon on the Mount is to take this to a deeper level and tell us what we are supposed to be like, and to do so, he uses a simple object lesson. That you and I are like salt, and we are like light. So to understand a little bit better what Jesus is getting at here, we kind of need to review a little bit the purpose for those two things, all right? Salt is a preservative. That's one of the purposes. Around here, of course, we know that salt can melt ice, right? We've all got a couple of huge bags in our garage. But particularly this purpose of salt for Jesus, food tastes a whole lot better with salt. You don't just pour a bowl of salt and eat it like Cheerios, right? I mean, just a dash makes my French fries taste so much better. Pulls out the flavor of a great steak. Salt. Light. Light creates. Light creates heat. It brings sight. Light allows us to see things like a golf ball flying through the air. Allows us to see uh, the beautiful colors of a horizon, right? Gets to see the smiles on people's faces when their masks are on. Light helps us be safe. Light helps grow things. We're going to see that here with the arrival of spring. But salt and light essentially are just simply ordinary things that you and I can find laying around our house. So what you and I are supposed to get here from Jesus is this, that salt and light are valuable, ready, because of their impact on other things impact on other things. Let me put it this way. Salt and light are influencers. influencers. Jesus is saying here that you and me as disciples are going to have an impact, not necessarily through some great missionary effort, although that is great for some, but more so through the simple and the profound ways that you and I live out our faith every day. Salt of the earth here literally means that which is right underneath your feet. Makes sense, right? In fact, at first the early Christians would have understood this to mean right where you are. Being salt, being light, right where you live within your relationships, within your social circles, through ordinary faithfulness, being salt and being light through your everyday integrity, your work ethic, the words you choose, the tones you choose, your care and your compassion. 
See, Jesus is saying here that people are going to better see and better understand the gospel through their experiences and their interactions with you. And again, from last week, I don't believe we can really understand this that well apart from Jesus' Beatitudes introduction. Sometimes being an influencer for Christ means that you will be laughed at, ridiculed, persecuted, even hated because of your faith, because of your values that you stand on that are opposed to the world's values. But brothers and sisters, that's okay. It really is okay. In fact, if you've never been laughed at or ridiculed, or persecuted because of your beliefs, because of your values, what you hold to be true, it is quite probable that you are not being salt. That you are not being light. You're just melding in with the rest of the world. Unnoticed, indifferent. So what I want to do is take a look at Matthew 5, these verses, one more time. This time I want to read it from a paraphrased version of the Bible by Eugene Peterson called The Message. Now, I don't typically like paraphrases most times, but sometimes... Like with this text, this passage, it can be really good. Follow along with me. Jesus says, Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and you will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it, Jesus says. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors of the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide it under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you up on a light stand. Now that I have put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, Shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. Be opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up to God, this generous Father in heaven. I do like that. So, I don't know, maybe the kids of today really honest in what they want to be when they grow up. So I want to do this here as we conclude. This next week, I want to challenge you and myself. I want us to all open our eyes and I want for us to consider how God is using us, how God is using you personally to be salts and to be lights. Think through with me, parishioners, how God is using this church, the ministries of this church, to be salt and light within the community. People of influence, kingdom of God. Consider how God is using the people around you to be light for you, to be salt for you, and take time this week to thank God for them. Ordinary people, ordinary you, people, frankly, that this world simply cannot live without. God bless you and love you all the way to glory. Amen. Typically at this time, I haven't said this for a few weeks, typically at this time in most churches and many churches and around here, we... We take up our, our worshiping God with our offering.
And again, most of you know we haven't done that in 11 months, but we've had uh, a lot of different ways and avenues to be able to do that. If you are one who uh, brought an offering here today, one of the ways is there's an offering box in the back uh, that you'll pass right by on your way out or as you come in in, in the future. But uh, just a, a ways that we continue to worship God in our lives together, being salt and being light. I invite you to stand for a time of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for being so incredibly practical for us today. There's no confusion in the message for today on what it is that as baptized children find their identity in you saved and perfectly righteous in your sight on account of Christ, that you then call us to become and to be who we are, like salt and like light. And everybody's here, if anything like me, I know how many times I have chosen to just meld in with the rest of the world and go unnoticed and indifferent. This is not your calling. Enable us by your spirit to take up this challenge, to see the people around us, to be thankful and to be people for you, whom this world simply cannot live without. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And yeah, great God, we thank you on behalf of Caleb and Kara and Nora Waite uh, on the safe, the happy, and the healthy arrival of little Henry Peter Friday afternoon. And especially we thank you for being with Kara, the doctors and the surgeons in that C-section. She continues to heal and strengthen as both mommy and precious little Henry grow. We thank you for this gift to their lives and this gift to our lives as they anticipate my little lot I love the waters of holy baptism to grow and mature to be salt and light that we cherish in this congregation and be with all expectant mommies and daddies these precious gifts of life within them. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And the Father, every time we gather in our church this size, there's always people grieving because of the passing of loved ones. So today we hold up Sherry Souza and family, relatively new members, upon the passing of her brother, Craig Smith, this week at the tender age of 51. We pray for the family of Terry Walker, Walker family, recently former members, upon her passing due to complications related to coronavirus. Lord, surround these families with your comfort and your strength as they anticipate in Christ again that grand and glorious reunion that await all who die in saving faith. Oh, okay, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Heavenly Father, then these individuals we now name before you for your healing touch, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, or even spiritually. Uh, today we pray for Charlotte Betzel the four-year-old daughter of Andrew Whitney Betzel, as she has been hospitalized with meningitis, doing much better as we speak, but continue uh, to grant her healing. George Seberg, suffering a bad infection on his left foot, leg, neuropathy in his feet, facing the possibility of extreme measures. We pray for Jalen Kerr, having ACL surgery this Wednesday for comfort and strength and quick healing. And a friend of Jalen's on her softball team, Tegan Meese. Tegan hospitalized with fluid around her heart, tests having shown a tumor in her chest. We pray for the biopsy results are benign, whatever causing her condition to be treated with antibiotics. And now, Lord, we hold up these individuals before you quietly in our hearts. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A word of procedure here.
here. For those of you who may not be aware, as we receive Holy Communion today, uh, it is a continuous flow approach. And uh, you, you will start on this side of the pew. You'll be ushered out. Just do what you know what to do. Just kind of stick a six feet away or whatever. Keep your masks on, please, as you come and receive both the bread and the wine as you pass by. Then be able to uh, take the elements and return to your seat. And then we'll switch over to this side and come through that way. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took a cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you, for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace and the joy of Christ be with each of you all. Thank you. Do you feel comfortable to share that piece within your family or pew or across the pew?
Now may this true body and blood of our living and loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be God's blessing on each of you in true faith, keeping you steadfast in that faith and joy unto the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand, shall we then receive the Lord's final benediction upon our day and our week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Hey, we entered worship. Yes. 